Gorgeous! Today I am going to show you how to finish your symmetrical owl that we started last week. Now last week we just left it mostly black and white. You might have added brown for the branch. But today we're going to add some more color around it. We're going to add movement to our picture and we're going to look at the artist Vincent Van Gogh for our inspiration. All right, let's so get started. Before we get started here today, I want to show you uh, a painting made by Vincent Van Gogh. The name of this picture is Starry Night. And you can see by the picture, it is the sky is the main focus of this picture. Now, when we look at this picture by Vincent Van Gogh, you're going to notice that it's more than just stars in the sky. You're going to notice that there are swirls and circles, and it's all done with these little broken lines. Now, Van Gogh is a famous artist now. When he was alive, he was not famous and not very well liked. He maybe only sold one or two paintings in his whole life, which made him very sad. Um, but it was after his death that people started to notice that his artwork was beautiful and full of life. And so we're going to try to use this sense of movement created by the broken lines and the swirling lines um, to help us finish our picture. All right, so here's what you're going to need. You will need some crayons. Of course, you're going to need your paper from last time. And we're going to start with just crayons. Now, if you did this with crayon last week, it, this will work wonderfully. If you did it with marker, it will still work wonderfully. Now, what I'm doing is I'm going to pull out just my warm colored crayons. My warm colors are yellow, orange, and it looks like I have a bunch of different kinds of oranges here, and my red. These are your warm colors. Um, sometimes red violet can fit into that, but I think this is plenty to start with. I'm going to start with my yellow, and if I look over at uh, my owl, I think I can add a few touches of color to it as well. I think I want the eyes to really stand out on my owl. So I'm going to use yellow. Now, if you'd rather use one of the other warm colors to color the owl eyes, you can do that. Now, if you use black crayon, be careful. Try not to color right over those lines because they can smear a little bit. Although, I don't think that would be terrible in this picture to have some smeary, smudgy lines. I'm also going to color the feet. You can use one of your warm colors for that. Uh, and I think I'll use a different warm color for my beak. The rest of the owl can stay white since it is a snowy owl. Um, if you'd rather choose different colors for the eyes, the beak, or the feet, the talons, um, make sure you're choosing a warm color. So blues, greens, and purples are not going to work for that right now. Now I think I'm going to color in my moon. The nice thing about crayons is that you can just use one color if you want. I'm pushing really firmly with my crayon so the colors show up nice and bright because I will tell you we're going to do something a little bit different. If you have either markers or watercolor paints av available, I'm going to show you how you can use those as well in a little bit. So now if I look back at Vincent Van Gogh for our inspiration, I'm going to look at how he did his moon and his stars. I noticed that there's all these broken lines around the stars and around the moon, just to make them look like they're glowing. And he did that with mostly warm colors and white. So I might even get out my white crayon here. So I'm gonna get that over here. And I'm gonna start by making a star. And it's just simply a, a dot. And then I'm going to use broken lines to go around that. I usually go around at least two or three times. You can switch colors if you're tired of using the same. You can even mix colors if you want to by coloring on top. You can decide how many broken lines you want to go around. This one I just did four times around and I like that. 
it's okay. Oh, now my moon almost doesn't feel like it's glowing. So I'm gonna do the same thing with my moon. I'm going to draw a broken line going around and I'm pushing really firmly so my colors show up bright, but also so that if I use the marker or watercolors, they don't just completely disappear later. Notice how I didn't go through the owl with my broken lines. So if your moon was behind your owl, you wanna make sure you're not coloring through. It feels like this needs, I'm just gonna make some broken lines to fill this area up too. Otherwise it just seems too empty. I think I might use a little bit of orange on top just to make kind of I like that look. Maybe some orange in between my broken lines. So you decide how many of those. I think we need more than just one star. I'm going to start this time maybe with this color of star. There's no rule. This is your picture. Even though we're looking at Van Gogh for inspiration, we aren't copying him. We're making up our own designs and so it's okay if we do it a little different you know I'm kind of wanting to try some of this white and now I know white is not showing up right now but if you have markers or watercolors available it does something really neat later on so I'm gonna do that now if you do not have markers or watercolor paints at home you can still do this with your crayons um, just you're going to end up instead of using marker or watercolor you'll end up using crayons to do the whole thing maybe i'll have a red one over here and this one i think i'm going to do all white around it although the one bad thing about using white i must admit is it's kind of hard to see right now so if you're having trouble seeing where you've put your white lines hold it up move it around until you can see sometimes i even hold it up to the light um, on the ceiling or in the window so that I can really see that. I think I'll do one more right here. And this one I'm gonna go around with yellow and orange and maybe dark orange and let's do white at the end. I'm going in between with my white. That way I can remember that it's kind of there. All right, so you to, you can also do this if you want to. If you looked at his sky, you might have noticed there were some spiral lines as well. So if you're interested in kind of creating that, when you do use spiral lines with broken, it does create that sense of movement in your picture. So if you're interested in doing that, you certainly can. I'll show it in, in um, yellow just so you can see it better, but you could do this with white as well. So if I'm doing a, a spiral, I use my broken line, but then I just stop. And I'm gonna do that couple times so it's not just too thin and maybe I will go and use some white now that I know where my yellow is you can do that with any color really any warm color now what I'm gonna do next I'm going to put my warm colored crayons away and I'm going to get out my cool colors. So I've got blues, purples, and green. I'm going to stay away from my yellow greens because they seem kind of almost too warm right now. I'm just going to stick with the really cool colors. When I'm talking about cool and warm colors, boys and girls, I'm talking about um, how they feel, like the temperature. If you look at these, they were kind of, the warm colors, the red, the yellow, and the oranges remind you of fire, whereas these blues, greens, and purples remind you of cool water or things that are colder. They don't actually feel different, but they make the picture feel that way. So now I'm going to use my blue, and I'm just gonna keep doing, or my green, or my purple, I'm going to keep adding lines to fill the rest of my paper. If you don't have markers or crayons, 
you would want to keep doing this until your whole picture is filled. And when you're tired of using one cool color, switch to a different one. Can't remember where my white my white was down there, so I had to kind of move my paper. I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. All right, so today I think I have finished uh, drawing my broken lines, filling up with my crayons. Okay, now that you have all the crayons lines drawn, warm colors for the stars and the moon and cool colors around in the empty spaces with broken lines. I want you to stop for the day and I want you to take a break. Next week I will be showing you how to use marker or watercolors to fill in the remaining spaces. If you do not have those things at home you can leave it just the way it is. Alright, I will be seeing you next time. Stay creative!